Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Anna, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. And I really enjoyed Adela and how she's introduced to us. And largely, she seems kind of grossly underestimated by those who are around them. When you think of your own, and as we go on, we learn that she has far more skills than we could ever imagine. When you think of times in your life when people have underestimated you, how did you reveal to them your skill set? Did you pop it all out at once? Did you spoon feed it to them a little bit? How do you reveal it? Um, I do think so, but I, you know what? I feel that sometimes we do that to ourselves too. I think most of the time we underestimate us, you know, and then we realize we're way more capable of things that when we are in situations that we have to do them, you know, like, even for me, for these movies, like, oh my God, I've never done a horror movie and I've never been the lead in, in, a, in a franchise. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I have the same level and I have the same experience that everyone else in this room. And it was just that kind of like insecurity that I think we all have. And, um, and but, but, but that's one thing. And at the same time, yes, it has happened to me definitely that uh that i've been underestimated no when because of maybe the, your culture or your language or being a woman being certain age a lot of the things um that the, the, that people think one way of you and then you surprise them um but it's like a sweet thing to do right it's like a sweet revenge so i do i do tend to go little by little like yeah I know how to do this and I know how to do this and I've done this and I've done that. Yeah. Um, I love that. Sometimes it's I fun. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Now, with, with, now, with now seeing yourself as the lead and being a little, you know, apprehensive at first, were you able to watch it back? Were you squeamish? You know, how did you watch your performance in this and how, how do you think you did? Oh, I don't know. It is, it is really, really hard to watch my I love to watch my performances like 10 years after I did them like if I see like an old movie of my, mine like 10 years ago I really enjoy it because I don't know I just don't feel that that person is me but like if it's something recent I do get a little nervous and oh, why did I do that I should have done this or uh yeah because oh, that was two years ago so now I have more experience than two years ago and it's like oh I wish I knew this at that moment um but I do I'm, I'm very proud of the movie I'm very proud of the character and that what what everyone did and the director I think the story is great um so yeah I'm I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the result I'm happy with the result too I thought you were mm -hmm. awesome you know I've seen you in a previous role handling you know uh guns and things like this but now there's some real rigors with that that were different from your for your other roles how did you how did you train for the rigors of that do you feel like you could go and pick up some guns now and handle them with some skill no no like it's something weird because uh i come like i was doing army of the dead for like four months and then i started shooting uh the perch a week later and just a week later i already forgot a lot of things and also my 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 my, my gun and, and 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 the the machine was different so you had to relearn how to do it. But um, I do now, now have a lot of knowledge about how to handle a gun, how to, more, mostly how to respect it and how to work around it and, and be safe more than being quick or being annoying, you know, but I do know the process of being, oh, this is a gun, this is how you should, you know, touch it or, or hold it or give it to someone else or how to, that I know. That, that, that I'm proud of. <laughs> well, I'm proud of you. And this was a great role. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I look Thank forward you. to folks seeing it. Me too. Thank you very much for, for, for this interview. Have a Thank great you. day. You too. Hello, Mr. Bloom. I like your festive hat you got going on today. Thank you. That's my fur chat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These purge movies never get old to me. They're always interesting how you can take a topic that could be very relevant and still make it fresh and still make it new. At this point, how do you still discern 
what makes it good, what makes it a right fit for Bloom House? Because you all seem to be ahead of the curve when it comes to those sort of storytelling. Well, James DeMonico, who writes, has written all these movies, directed the first three. He has a real ability to predict the future. And I always, just to answer your question, I always really encourage him to take chances and hit on things that are, what, what is, what is, what's personal to him, what bothers him. Um, uh, you know, this time around the wall, the wall bothered him a lot. So he, so he wrote a movie about that, which I thought was great. The first and foremost, though, is that the movies are really entertaining and really scary. If they're not scary and entertaining, no one's going to, no one's going to hear any message that he has. Uh, um, and I think this movie is very unique because it's the first purge without rules. So all the rules are out the window. There's just total anarchy has taken over the United States. And here's our chance to watch it. And uh, I think it's my favorite purge for that reason. Same here, because I always think they say every great civilization has to fall at some point. And in this case, it might be America's time to, to fall like America's all the other great time. civilizations. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say every, every great civilization comes to an end and it may be maybe America's time. I think all the Purge movies to a certain degree are about kind of the, 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 the hollowness of the American dream or that the American dream is it happens for some people, but not others. And I think if there's one kind of big theme of the Purge movies is that there's the, the myth of America and the actual America. And those two things are very different. Mm -hmm. One, and lastly, what's striking to me is these uh, kinships that are born out of adversity instead of tribe, instead of common neighborhood or common thread. How close do you think, when you look at the news today, where, where do you think we lie as a culture? Building bonds out of adversity with our neighbors or still going in the direction that our people are going in this film? I don't know, I, I'm an optimist. So I like to think that we're, we're on a better track I like to think, you know, to a certain degree, the world came together to fight this, this terrible disease. And, and you know, you know we, all we have is each other to rely on to solve these bigger problems. So hopefully we'll be doing more of that in the future. I do too. Well, I totally enjoy these movies and each one makes me think in a different capacity than the previous ones. And it, this definitely did that for me. I thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Always enjoy all the Bloom House projects. Oh, well, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Take care. Bye-bye. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.